What's up friends, Dan here and today I want to talk about testing in Spring Boot. So this comes up because of a tweet I sent out recently saying please stop calling this a unit test. And it was really just meant to spark a discussion and a conversation about the topic. And what it was is I kept seeing tutorials and videos and articles that were calling this particular type of test a unit test. And it was testing a REST controller but it was still involving Spring's dispatcher servlet and the entire request response lifecycle. So for me, that's not a unit test. That's an integration test, albeit an isolated one with a bunch of mock dependencies. Still, for me, that's an integration test. So what I wanna to do today is create a very, very simple REST controller. And then I'm gonna create what I think is a unit test, and then we'll add the Spring bits in, and we'll talk through creating an integration test for that REST controller. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, what are we waiting for? Let's jump on in. So we're gonna get started with this project by heading over to start.spring.io. And we're gonna go ahead and create the initial project. We'll import it into IntelliJ and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a group here. We'll call it danvega.dev. We'll call this um, unit versus integration. And what I need here is I just need the web dependency that will actually bring in the uh, testing stuff as well. So build web, including RESTful applications using MVC. So if we want to look at it, you can actually explore it. If you look at the palm, we're going to get our Spring Boot starter test. And so that's going to give us what we need. So let's go ahead and generate that. And then I'll import that into IntelliJ. I'm in IntelliJ. This is just the application that I was working on previously. So I'm going to head over to File, New Project from uh, Existing Sources. We're going to find that unit versus integration. And I'm going to pick the palm.xml. I want to import this as a project on this window. And we're gonna go ahead and let that um, finish up here. All right, so just a normal Spring Boot application. So what I wanna do is actually start with a controller. So I'm gonna create a new package here and we're gonna call this controllers. And in there, I'm gonna create a new Java class and we will call this the hello controller. Again, we're gonna try and keep this pretty basic here. So this is actually going to be a REST controller, but I don't want to create a REST controller yet, and it'll make more sense in a second. So what is the main purpose of this controller? Well, this controller is going to define a method that is going to return a string, and we're going to call it hello. And this string is actually going to take an argument called name, and what it's going to do is it's going to return a formatted string for us. So we're going to use string.format, and it's going to say hello, comma, and then whatever we uh, use or whatever we supply as the name. So we will say uh, name. So that is the essential uh, functionality of our controller so far. We're going to have one endpoint. We're going to have one function. And its job is to take a string called name and return a formatted string. So this is important. We're not involving Spring yet. That is not what this is going to do yet. Uh, eventually, we're going to make this a REST controller and make this be available to the outside world. But right now, that's not the functionality of this. So what I can actually come down to is generate and test. And I want to use JUnit5. I want to use a hello controller test. And we're going to test this particular method. And I'm going to click OK. So now we get this hello controller test. And you can see that this is down in Java and in the controllers package where we want it. Uh, just why I like using that generate function, it, it will go ahead and throw it in the appropriate package for you. Um, but here is our test. And let's talk about what that test should look like. So again, in a unit test, 
I guess it should, I guess we should go ahead and start to define like a unit test, right? So, all right, so I just did, I just found a couple articles that I'm gonna share with you, but uh, I guess we should really define what a unit test is first. So there's a Wikipedia, you can search through that. Um, I like this particular thing right here. So this says the purpose is to validate that each unit of the software performs as designed. A unit is the smallest testable part of any software. So I really like that portion. That That's always kind of how I've determined what a unit test is. Like what is the smallest unit that I can test? Not the controller itself in our case. In our case to me, that's the one method. We have a hello method, I wanna test that. There's also a really great article by Martin Fowler on unit testing. Uh, that is really good. So I'll, I'll go ahead and provide some links to each of these in the description below. So knowing that, I know that like my unit test, I want to just test this one, um, this one method. And to do so, what I'm going to do is in my test here, I need to create an instance of that controller. So what I can do is I can say, all right, well, I know I have a hello controller. We'll call it controller. And I'm going to new up that controller. We'll say new hello controller. And then what I want to do is I want to get the response. So the response is going to come from the controller.hello me method. And I'm going to pass in an argument of world. So now what I want to do, so it depends on your philosophy. Uh, I always have gone by the arrange, act, and assert, but you can also say given, when, then. So I would say that this is arrange, act, and this will be assert. Uh, also, again, given, when, then, however you want to look at it. But now what I want to do is I've got my response back. I want to go ahead and assert equals and I want to make sure that uh, hello world is the returned response. And we can do that by comparing the actual string hello world to the response we get back. So now what we can do is actually go ahead and run this. So go ahead and run. And that test passes. So for me, this is a unit test. We haven't involved anything in the spring world. We don't care that uh, there's a rest controller annotation. We don't care that there's a path. There's no servlet. There's no request and response life, life cycle. This is the smallest thing I can test. And for me, that's a unit test. Now, once we start involving spring, that becomes an integration test. Um, we could obviously uh, debate the merits of this test versus uh, the integration test that we're going to write. The integration test is a little bit more valuable for me, but again, just being able to define the in, uh, test the inputs and outputs of say a method uh, for me that is really where it all starts. So I will start with a test like this. Then what I'll do is I'll come back to the controller and say, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's go ahead, add the spring bits in, and run an integration test. Over to the controller, and as I said, we are going to kind of make this work now. So we know that this is going to be a REST controller, so let's say REST controller. I also know that this is going to be a git mapping, so we want to respond to localhost 8080 slash hello. And this is also going to take a request parameter. So we can use at request param, and that is name, name. And we also want to supply a default value. So this can be default value of world. OK, so now our REST controller is looking a little bit more like a REST controller. Let's go ahead and generate a new test. So I'm going to generate a test in JUnit 5, uh, hello controller test. I'm going to test the hello, and I'm just going to call this an int test. So I know that's integration test. So we are starting the same way that we did before, right? But now we're going to start to include some of this spring stuff. So what I want to do is create a web MVC test, and I want to specifically test the hello controller so I can do so like that. 
Um, also, with JUnit 5, I need to extend with spring extension dot. So that's a little bit different uh, than the run with annotation that you might be used to with JUnit 4, but that will get us started. So part of that web MVC test, if we control click into there, let's download sources. Um, an annotation that can be used for a Spring MVC test that focuses only on Spring MVC components. So this is really nice because using this annotation, it will disable full auto configuration and only configure relevant to uh, MVC tests. So example, our controllers, uh, things like uh, uh, Jackson for JSON converting, uh, components, services, repositories, etc. So we are loading Spring, but we're loading a very minimal approach. We're, we're loading the only things, the only bits that we need, right? So I really do like that because it's going to make this faster. Again, uh, still to me, that's an integration test because we're loading the framework with it. So what we also get with this is we get a bean, we get a, a private, we can use private mock MVC and this mock MVC will allow us to um, just do that, mock out the MVC stuff. So we're able to do things like call a particular request and um, say, hey, I want to perform a git request on this particular path. and. Uh, you can look through the documentation here. But we're going to get an instance of that just because of this WebMVC test. So this is auto-wired in for us, which is really nice. So what that lets us do is here in our hello method, I'm going to create a request builder. And we'll call this request. And we are going to perform a request on git. So we can shorten that in a second. but all we're doing is performing a get to the slash hello URL or URI. So now what we can do is we could set up a result. So we're going to say MVC result result is equal to MVC. So we're using our mock MVC. And what we're going to do is we're going to perform that particular request builder that we built. So we have a request here. So here's the request I want to perform, and I want to return that. So this is going to throw an exception, so we need to add that. And then finally, what I want to do is because that is going to return that, I want to take that result, and now I want to assert that it equals that. So hey, instead of just testing the method, I want you to actually load up Spring. I want you to perform a request to slash hello with no argument. So if there's no name argument, we know the default value is world. So we know that we should be able to assert equals that it's going to equal hello world. And the uh, result that get response dot get content as a string. So that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and try that. We're going to run hello. Now what you're going to see though is you're going to see a bunch of spring stuff starting. So it's actually starting up the application context, but again, not the entire um, auto configuration, everything that it needs to do, everything that it can do. It's just really isolating this one controller test. And that went ahead and passed. So that's great. So I'm going to show you one more test. And we can go ahead and say public void. Let's test hello with a name. This is also going to throw an exception. And so I just want to show you another way that you may see this in examples. So we can use that MVC, we can perform, and instead of building the request builder, we can go ahead and import this as a static. Oops, why is that not importing? So we can say git 
hello. And I'm going to say name equals Dan. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to, instead of returning this as a result here, we can actually use this inline. There are methods like and expect and return. So I want to say and expect that the return, so what we want to get the return so we can use something called content. And we want to make sure that that is equal to hello Dan. So let's just go ahead and import that static method. And that is this one. And now we should be able to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and run this. Now we're saying, hey, if we pass the name Dan, we expect the result to be hello Dan. And that returns OK. So cool. I think that is really what I wanted to get across today, uh, being able to start with the most simplest form of a controller, which is a method. Uh, a method takes in an argument and returns a response. So what are our inputs and our outputs of the controller method? So I start with that. I'm able to write a unit test against that and then build upon that. So then I'm able to add in the spring bits like rest controller, uh, get mapping, request parameter, start to build out my actual application. And then I can build, I can create an integration test that will actually go out and say, all right, Let's involve Spring now. How do I hit that path? How do I supply that argument as a request parameter? How do I test against those the results that I'm expecting to test against? So I hope that helped. Again, I put this out there for my own doing. I just wanted to kind of start the conversation. So I'd love your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, so below, uh, if you get a chance, uh, please leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think on the subject. Uh, what is your idea of a unit test? What is your idea of an integration test? Do you care what we call them? Uh, at the end of the day, I guess I don't either. I'm just trying to clarify that. So leave me your thoughts below. And if you found value in this video, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.